Hey guys, Josh coming at you today with a first for me. Um, you know, ever since I got into flying drones, I, I've really been on the five inch craze. And I'm one of those people that when I get something and get into something, I don't just want to be mediocre at it. So I don't, I don't have a habit of really jumping around and jumping from this to that to something else. I like to really find one thing and stick with it and get really, really well acquainted with that itself. So I haven't really spent much time outside of the five inch arena. I have spent some time playing with whoops, you know, the, the ducted inductrix, uh, brushed type drones. But this right here, the Eishin Red Devil, will be my very first toothpick format drone. All right, first and foremost, I just wanna be straight up with you guys. This has not been a bind and fly experience for me. The very first thing that I noticed, um, as you can see here on the case of this, when I received this is that it came with a Fly Sky receiver. So it has a built-in SPX receiver in it. So, before I could do anything, because I don't have a Fly Sky transmitter at all, I had to open it up and essentially drop Crossfire into it. Now, the other thing, while I was taking it apart to be able to get into it, the build quality became a little bit evident. I haven't fixed this yet, it's coming here shortly. But this motor wire and connector, as you can see, that wire pulled right out, and that's the middle wire. It's not really under any tension or anything. So whatever was going on, it, it wasn't very well attached to the pin. So now I've got to get the pin fished out of here so that I can go ahead and reattach the wire. I'm probably going to use a little bit of solder for that. And then I'll finally get into doing some flight testing of this thing. So just know that the items that I talk about right now, I have no flight experience with this. Now when you first receive the package, what you get essentially wrapped up in the mailing materials is this hard shell case here, okay? When you open it up, it's got the Red Devil in it, seated in here with props on. It's got a battery, just one 3S battery, uh, and that battery's coming in at 300 ma at about a 30C, 60C burst. So ample probably but not ideal and then you get a bag full of you know two sets of spare props on top of the set that's already on here a couple spare screws standoff some extra double side sticky tape just all kinds of stuff in here and then last but not least you also get a pretty good user manual and when I say pretty good, what I mean is that the English in it is good and it goes over the major points of how to bind, um, the steps to go through, what you have to do for everything, things that you need to be paying attention to in beta flight, uh, and all that jazz. Now, I'm not going to make much use of this because one, being on crossfire, um, my, my binding steps are going to be a little bit different, and two, before I take this out and fly with it, I'm going to go ahead and put Betaflight 4.1 on here and probably try to find the, the micro filter settings and stuff. Actually, I might even just leave it at stock to see. <clears throat> but it fits really nice in this case. It, it zips up really well. And just in anticipation, once I got this, in anticipation of just how much fun I was going to be having. I went ahead and got some more 3S batteries. Now these, I stuck with the 300 mAh capacity, but I went up to an ADC battery just to try to eke a little bit more performance out of these. So let's go ahead and just stick this case to the side here. This Red Devil format should look really familiar because Eoshin is essentially using their trash can top with, um, you know, with a slightly different frame. Uh, different motors, things like that. Now these motors are happy model. Uh, they're 1102, 8700 kV as you can see here. What really attracted me uh, when I asked Banggood to send me this because full disclosure, uh, Banggood sent me this unit for review uh, at no cost to myself. So, you know, they, they really want me to be able to run it through the ringer and just kind of provide my thoughts on it, uh, both on Banggood and here on Facebook. But what really got my attention versus some of the other options that I had was this Caddx camera. What you're looking at here is the Caddx EOS 2. 
So it's got a full-size camera with a full-size lens, a full-size sensor, and you know, one of the things that's typically lacking uh, in a micro build or a really small build like this is the camera quality. So knowing I was going to be using DVR for recording, and not even built-in DVR, but you know, goggle DVR, knowing that 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 camera was really going to be my lifeline for the entire experience, I wanted a good camera, not some janky no-name off-brand. As far as the flight controller, when I took the, the cover off and got in there to install the Crossfire, I found out that this is running a Crazy B F4 Pro. So, uh, all in one ESC. This is a 2S or 3S compatible drone, and it comes with a Nano VTX capable of transmitting 25 to 200 milliwatts. That was the other thing that really got my attention with this. And when I took the cover off, you know, everything's pretty tight under this hood. Um, I, I actually had a little bit of a problem just trying to get the crossfire in a decent place in there. Um, but using some double-sided thick, uh, thick soft foam tape, um, I was, re I was able to get it mounted under there. I also pulled in a little bit, and you'll see I kind of pinched it under the edge here. I pulled in the VTX antenna so it wasn't flopping around. I didn't want it to get caught in the props any. And likewise, I'll probably find a way to at least semi-secure um, this Crossfire antenna. What's really nice is this comes with the XT30 connector and even a capacitor right on it. So all in all, it doesn't look like a bad build. The bind and boot buttons are reachable. The USB port is in a good spot. Um, even the motor connectors seem to be pretty well placed. Now as far as battery retention, you know, it comes with this little red square that kind of just hooks in here and, and sits there like this and you slide the battery in. I pulled that out while I had it apart because I'm going to use a small battery strap or even just some rubber bands. Um, probably even with a little bit of moon gel, some like, uh, oh my god type stuff to go ahead and just try to secure that battery to this as, as well as I can. The only other thing I really have a, a minor concern with is the frame itself. Now, I have handled some other toothpick style drones, and there are some out there um, that, that I will leave unnamed that have a really, really firm, um, very stiff frame. This frame is not so stiff. Now that could be good or bad. This isn't going to have a ton of weight flying around, so I'm not thinking that, that it needs the flexibility for any amount of durability. It probably could have used a stiffer frame just to really, uh, real, more than anything, stop it from breaking. So we'll see how that handles uh, when I get it out. I'm really anxious, you know, I'm not apprehens apprehensive about this at all. I'm really anxious to get this up and running so I can take it out and really just enjoy it, I hope. I I'm hoping it's a really good experience. Um, the props don't seem like they're going to bind up on anything, but you can see just how tight they come to the frame here. These are 65 millimeter bi-blade props that come with it. Um, I will be testing as well, not for the props themselves, but especially what they do to like this build. Uh, some of the HQ props, 65 millimeter bi-blades, and then I've got some uh, Pyro Flip brand as well, some of those hyper lights that Bob Rugi worked on. So let me go ahead and get this thing repaired, and we'll get it out in the field and see what it's all about. I told you guys I had to put Crossfire in this because I don't have Fly Sky anything. So I'm going to show you guys here. I've got my Crossfire receiver, as you can see right here. And what I've done is I've hooked up the 5 volt and the ground. Let's see just how close I can get here. To those two pads right there in the center of your screen. And then I've hooked up the send and receive, the RX and the TX, to RX and TX2. as you can see right there and wired them to the crossfire appropriately now getting it all back in here is a little tight and that's where you know I've just taken the double sided tape that came on this and put it down one side taking a piece of the extra piece that they sent put it over here and I just 
put the crossfire on top of the VTX and then started stacking. Now that's really great because as you're going to see here in just a second, when I get this hooked up to Betaflight and I come into my ports tab here, what do we got here? UART 2 is completely unused and available. UART 1 is used for smart audio. But UART 2 is wide open. So now all we need to do is flag UART 2 as being our serial RX port. Save and reboot. And then in the configuration tab, we need to come down and change our receiver mode to serial based and choose crossfire. Save and reboot. Welcome to OpenTX. Okay. Just because some things have a chance to be a little bit different here, I've set up a new model for this drone. And let's go ahead and get into the Crossfire Lua scripts here. I'm going to put the transmitter in the binding mode and then let's go ahead and plug in and yep we're going to go ahead and let that receiver update. God I love Crossfire. And there we go. So yeah, as you can see on the crossfire here, we are now bound and ready to roll. Which means, as long as I've got the proper wires plugged to the proper places, when we come to the receivers tab here, and I obviously don't, so, I need to go ahead and make sure I get the uh, RX and the TX wires swapped around because I have this habit. It's like almost 100% I can always get them wrong despite my best efforts. And just like that, through the magic of editing, I've gone ahead and swapped the RX and TX lines and every channel is in its appropriate place. I even have the aux channels going, got my aux channel 1 and 2 there and but now we are ready to set up the modes here. Go ahead and... Actually, before I get too carried away with this, you know what I'm probably going to do? To go ahead and flash this thing to Beta Flight 4.1 because, well, why not? Let's grab a dump. Now, as you can see here, the great thing with a dump is we know what our target name is. It's the Crazy B F4 FS for Fly Sky. All right, there's 4.1 RC3. Going to load firmware online. And let's flash. Because, hey, why not? And boom, we are good. Now, through a bunch of setup that you don't need to see, I'm going to go ahead and get this all set up in beta flight again, and then we will continue. All right, guys. So we ended up getting it configured in beta flight and getting it all put back together. Now, I got to tell you, I, I wasn't really feeling the use of the plastic nuts to hold this on. And with the little bit of extra stack space in here is also having a hard problem just getting it getting it seated in a way that I felt comfortable. But you know, the way these slots are here, it uh it works really well with some small zip ties. So I just went ahead and zip tied that on there and that, that's really solid. I doubt it would feel that solid with, with just those little nuts. So, you know, as we can see here. 
and plug it in and engines are oh engines. We'll try that again maybe I need to give it another second engines are there she is armed and everything ready to roll the only thing I really need to do is find a better place to tuck this crossfire antenna because frankly it just wasn't made for something this small but I'll get that squared away and we should get some flying tomorrow all right guys so here's the first pack now this is the battery that came with the red devil uh, again, it's like a 3S, um, 30C or 40C battery. And, you know, I, I definitely want to evaluate the package the way it came, uh, the way it was intended. So these are the props that come with it. It's the battery that comes with it. The only thing that's different is I did bother to go ahead and put Betaflight 4.1 on it. But this is still stock tune. This is my rates but everything else stock as you can see and you know i feel like it's flying really really well now here and there you can see some prop wash that can be tuned out um i am seeing some jello here some jello in the camera so i've determined that it's definitely jello and not oscillations of any kind because um, I spent some time just doing full throttle punch outs right next to myself so that I could hear if it was really um, trilling or you know giving any indicators that there was something mechanical going on and there does not appear to be. As you can tell um, it's not hard to control in fact it flies a lot like a five inch drone. Um, a little bit lighter, a little bit floatier. Doesn't have quite as much carry. Um, nonetheless, the flight characteristics are there. This is nothing like a whoop in any way, shape, or form. So, the VTX, um, as you can see, is performing splendidly. This is the, the VTX that it came with on 25 milliwatts, and I'm getting... Um, a, a pretty clear signal even around the front of the house. So, mind you, even with only using the whip antenna that it came with, I'm not, not using any circular polarized anything. Now, the props that it comes with, um, I definitely wanted to use, and, and again, just to see kind of, as far as the package came, how flyable was it? And... The props are really durable. They may or may not be the best performing, but to me, they felt really, really good in the air. And the props, I, I bent up multiple times. I'm still on the first set of props. And I've run more packs than what you're going to see here. And they, they bend right back. They don't produce any vibrations or oscillations, and they just keep running. So... All in all, I feel like th this package definitely has a lot of value. Everything from coming with a hard shell case to the fact that it does come with a battery. It would be nice if it came with two batteries and, you know, three wouldn't be a complaint. But, you know, one at least gets you in there and gets you started. And as long as you are sure to <laughs> get the proper receiver type in it, you pretty much should have a mind and fly experience. With that said and everything you're seeing here, even with the additional weight of the Crossfire antenna and the Forever tubes and the receiver itself, you just can't tell that this thing isn't 100% stock. <laughs>